All right, folks, I'm getting asked an awful lot of questions on how do I flash firmware to my XM Plus because these are now coming with version 2. Point something of ACCST, and it's not going to work with what you probably already have on your radio. If you're having issues binding to this, it's probably because you don't have the right firmware on this or on your radio. They need to match. So now there's two reasons you're going to want to do this. One, you bought a new XM Plus and it has ACCST 2.1, 2. Point whatever on it, 2. Point something, and you have older firmware on your JR module or your ISRM if you're using an access radio. If you're using the old pre-ACCST 2.0 or pre-ISRM 2.0 firmware, you're not going to be able to bind this to your radio. So you have one of two options. One, you can upgrade the firmware on your radio, or two, you can downgrade the firmware on your receiver. The choice is up to you. If you're using an old ACCST radio and you only have like one model and you don't mind updating whatever few that you have, I would probably suggest updating your firmware. It's entirely up to you. Please check out the, the build notes of new firmwares and see if, you know, weigh the risk versus the gain. What is improving? What were the fish with the old features or the old bugs? Now, if you're using an access radio and you're binding to say a SPI board under D16, I would very, very much caution you not to update the ISRM to something past version 1.1.3. If you update your ISRM to version two, point something, you are probably no longer going to be able to bind with that old SPI D16 receiver. That SPI board doesn't have ACCST 2.0 compatible firmware on it. You'll have to stay with your old pre-ACCST or pre-ISRM 2.0 firmware. I'm sure that's awfully confusing. If you have questions, link in the description, tweetfv.com, find my Discord server, and I'll help you out. I got a lot of knowledgeable people there, including myself, that can help you walk through this process. What I'm going to show you today is how to update this to the current firmware. All right. First thing we need to do is grab our radio, make sure it's got batteries in it, and we have a USB cable to connect to our computer. Before we do that, we're going to need to download the firmware. So you're going to want to go to frsky.com, find your receiver. This one we're talking about is the XM Plus. You're going to want to go down to ACCST D16 firmware, and you can download the newest firmware, version 2.1.2. Go ahead and download that. But if you want to downgrade your new receiver to something pre-ACCST 2.0, you got to click down here. It's a little bit hard to see sometimes, but you have to hit the firmware history download. Download that and you'll get the old version of the firmware. While we're here, we're going to want to also check to make sure we have the newest version of the ISRM or the XJT module, whatever one you're working with. ISRM for access, XJT for ACCST radios. Go to ISRM module for your radio. If you have a X9 Lite S, go to the X9 Lite. It's the same firmware, but this one actually has uh, version 1.1.3 if you need to go backwards. Uh, for some reason, their listing for the X9 Lite S doesn't include this, but it, it's the same file. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> so we have version 2.1.6, and we have the old pre-ACCST 2.0 right here, version 1.1.3. If you have an old receiver and you want your radio to work with this, flash this version to your ISRM on your access radio. If you have a new receiver and you have old firmware on your radio, flash this file to the ISRM in your radio. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick up both of these. And we're going to go to where I save them. Okay, now that we have those files extracted to someplace on our computer, you're going to go over to your radio. Go ahead and turn this sucker on. Welcome to OpenTM. Plug in your USB cable and go to USB storage. You should see a storage device open up on your computer. It's going to look like this. Here is the storage on our radio. You also have to have an SD card inside your radio. If you don't have an SD card, this isn't going to work. Got to have an SD card. I'm going to put it in the firmware folder. I've kind of organized these to make it make sense. So I'm going to go to receivers and then uh, I'll make a folder that's XM plus. And in there, I am going to drop the two XM firmwares that I have.
I made an ISRM folder for the internal module, and I'm going to save those here as well. The file naming is really kind of weird from FRSky. Their, their naming convention isn't really very good. It says QX7 X7 Access X9 Lite. It's it's for everything. So this is going to be version 2.1.6, and I've already got it right there. And this is going to be version 1.1.3. There we go. So all we gotta do now is disconnect our radio and we'll go back to the flashing process. Another thing you may wanna do is make sure your radio, your internal operating system, OpenTX is updated, updated to the newest version. I think as of this video, it's like 2.3.11. I have a video, I'll put it in the video description and possibly over here. Click on that video, it'll walk you through how to update your radio. It's very important if you've never updated OpenTX, that you update OpenTX version of OpenTX that comes on this radio is missing a lot of features because it was a development build from FRSky. The actual community release of OpenTX needs to be put on there to make the process work the way it's supposed to. All right. So we can go ahead and disconnect our radio. The next thing we have to do to our XM Plus is we need to solder on a servo connector like this. We're gonna go S bus, power, and ground. And on the connector here, we're gonna go S-Bus, Power, and Ground. Power is always in the middle. We're going to find our little port in the bottom here, and we're going to go and plug that in. Power is in the middle because if you hook up power backwards to this receiver, there's a very good chance you will fry it. Some of these older receivers are not friendly to being hooked up backwards. Put a little bit of blue tack right there just so y'all can see this. So one of the issues you're going to run into on this radio is you're, you're going to run out of characters for it to display. So we're gonna to wanna to go into that firmware folder, the receiver, XM, we're gonna find our firmware. And these file names are too long for you to see on the radio. You're gonna see 2.1.2 SCC RSS, and then you're gonna lose the rest. So what we can do is we can edit these names and kinda of bring them down a little bit so we can see them. And for me, I'm in the US, so I'm just gonna delete all the LBT files. I don't need any of these. And the ones that don't say XM Plus, I don't need those either. So these are the only three files that I'll need. XM Plus, ACCST 2.1.2, FCC, and either nothing, RSSI 8, or RSSI 16. These are very important. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to update the firmware on the XM Plus first. All right, hold on menu. Go to page two where we have our SD card contents. Go down to firmware. Remember, we made a folder for receiver. We're gonna find XM Plus, that's the, the folder we made. We're gonna flash the 2.1.2 to it. Just start drilling through the menus, and here are our three files. Uh, I know you can't see it, so the middle one's RSSI 8 and the one's RSSI 16. What this is gonna do in Betaflight, it is automatically going to put RSSI on one of your aux channels, either aux 4 or aux 12, which in real world is channel 8 or channel 16. Remember, your gimbals count for four channels. So one, two, three, four, and then your first aux channel is channel five, six, seven, eight. So remember, you're only gonna be able to use three switches then because aux four or channel eight is gonna contain your RSSI. So keep that in mind. All right, find the firmware you want. So I want FCC RSSI channel eight, Trust me, there's an eight on the other end of there. Hold down your wheel and click flash S port. You should see your receiver light up and start flashing. There we go, receiver's flashed. Now, if you had a new receiver and you wanted older firmware, we're gonna go back to that pre-ACCSD 2.0 folder and we're gonna find XM Plus, FCC, and RSSI 8 FRK. Again, hold down the middle button and click Flash S port. It's the same process all over again. Now I'm putting the older pre-ACCST 2.0 firmware on this receiver.
which one you want to use, it's entirely up to you. Okay, now if you need to know what version of firmware is on your access radio, you're going to hold menu, page, 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 page 707. Go to modules and receiver version, and this will tell you what version firmware is on your internal module. If you don't see anything here, it's because you have a model selected that isn't using the internal module. You probably have either internal RF turned off or an external module turned on. Either way, you need to make sure you turn on the internal module either to ACCSD D16 or Access, and then it will power the module up and you'll be able to read that firmware. Now, if I want to go back to version 1.1.3, it's pretty easy to do, kind of like what we've been doing. I'm going to go over to your SD card, go to Firmware, remember we made that ISRM folder, find version 1.1.3, and we're going to do Flash Internal Module. And while that's flashing, we'll talk about one more way to flash your receiver. Well, there's actually two ways. There's beta flight pass through, but that's a real pain in the butt. Um, and there's a lot of gotchas with it, but there's another way to do it. And that's with one of these. It's the FR Sky S port air linker. I really don't recommend you use one of these unless you flash a ton of FR Sky receivers like I do. And what it does is it connects your computer with a USB port. There's a FR Sky flashing utility. It's just like using your radio. Hook your receiver up to it, plug this into a computer, tell it what COM port, what firmware, and it flashes it. It's not any faster, it's just you don't need to use your radio to do it. But it's an option. Just saying, it's out there. Link in the video description. All right, so if we exit out of there, and we go back to our version tab, we go to module and RX version, we see we now have version 1.1.3 on there. So this is pre-ACCST 2.0. So if we want to bind this now, we're going to make a model. We're going to change it to ACCST D16. We're going to come over to bind. We're not going to hit that yet. And what you want to do, just so, just for your own sanity, is go ahead and power up your receiver and see what the lights look like. We have a flashing red light. Okay? Remember that. So if we're in binding mode, you have a green light and the red light. See? Green light, red light. Now go over to your radio, hit bind, and we're going to do channel 1 through 8 telemetry on. And see how the red light's blinking? It's because now it's established a link between each other. Click bind so it stops the chirp. Disconnect your receiver and power it back up. You should have a green light. And there you go. That's bound. When you power off your radio, you should see the red failsafe light turn on. Welcome to OpenTX. There we go. Certainly is bound. So there you go. Real quick video on how to upgrade or downgrade your XM Plus or your receiver or your transmitter on your access enabled radio. Older radios with the ACCST and the internal XJT module is done pretty much the exact same way. Some of the other radios with the full size bays, you use your you use pins on the back of the use pins in the back of the JR bay. This newer si style radio, this one, the uh, X Lite, they use the little plug underneath the radio. Same thing with the I think the new X9Ds and also the new QX7. All the access radios have that S port plug on the underside of them, and that's how you update firmware on your receivers. Same process for the XM Pluses, the Archers. Well, the same process for the XM Plus, the XM, the RXSR. That's how you update them. All right, folks. If you have any questions, which I'm sure you will, this is this video would be. 30, 40 minutes long to cover all the different iterations of what you have to do for each receiver. This one's just meant to be a quick how-to guide and to let you know that it is possible to make this stuff work. If you have other questions, put them in the video description, but even a better place is go to tweetfpv.com, uh, hit that Discord link, and join my Discord. Plenty of help there. All right, guys. Hopefully this helps you out. 
I'm sure it may, may, may have created more questions than answers, but this can be done. It's not that hard. All right, folks, we'll see you around and good luck.